Um, I was going to get an Icon Pass this season, but then I uh, got really into baking. I don't miss the mountain at all. I don't. Why would I? You just got to fill that void. Good morning. My name is Natalie Jenderalovich, and I will be leading you in a 45-minute uh, yoga class this morning. Um, it's a all levels vinyasa flow. Um, vinyasa uh, directly means, translates to breath to movement. So with each movement we make, we will make a breath in conjunction with that. Um, and this class is designed to just reduce overall stress in the body. Um, we have a couple major stress points in our body, including the shoulders, uh, the low back and the hips. So anytime that we feel um, stressed out about something, we tend to build up a lot of pressure and pain in those um, those focal points. So we will be working on releasing that stress in the body as well as opening up and stretching and getting overall mobility in those, um, in those places as well. So uh, we will get started in an easy seated cross-legged position. Um, you're going to need a couple props and you can modify if you don't have props. So um, if you have a strap, and some yoga blocks, those will be absolutely necessary. Um, if you don't have either of those things, you can use a towel in replace of the strap and some firm pillows um, in replace of the blocks. So we'll start in a seated position. You can um, prop yourself up on blocks or pillows so that your hips are right in line with your knees. So rather than sitting sort of in this crunched like position where our knees are above our hips and it's not really that comfortable, we want to prop ourselves up and raise our hips so that they're right in line with our knees. And we'll just start in a seated position. You can place the um, palms right on top of the thighs or the knees. Sit up nice and tall and go ahead and close your eyes. And we're just going to start to deepen the breath. So we're slowing down our natural breathing so that we have these nice long inhales and exhales. And we're just gonna bring all of our attention to that breath. So we're gonna try to let go of everything that we have going on today, everything that we have going on tomorrow. And we're just gonna bring all of our awareness to our breath. And think about when you inhale, think about expanding through the belly and through the rib cage and the chest. So making space in the lungs, making space for the organs to work and the blood and the oxygen to flush through. And then as you exhale, you're compressing those places. So we're squeezing that blood and oxygen through our organs. With each inhale, we make space in that middle of our body and then each exhale we compress. And then you can even try to count the length of your inhales and exhales. So you can try counting to five if that helps sort of lengthen and helps you bring your focus to the breath. And then count down from five as you exhale. Just take a few more rounds of breath like this. And then you're gonna slowly start to blink the eyes open. And you're gonna take your right hand over across your head and sort of graze your ear with your fingertips. You're just gonna slowly start to tip the head over towards your right shoulder. You're gonna take your left fingertips and you're gonna place them on the mat. So that gives us a little bit more length there in the neck. So we're just holding this, we're taking a couple deep breaths here and you're just gonna to start to gently make some small movements forward and back with the head. So we're very gently nodding the head, yes, or uh, sorry, yes, yeah. <laughs> 
And you should feel this in the left side of your neck and even into the trapezius muscle a little bit right here and into the shoulder. And then with your next inhale breath, you'll gently release the head uh, with the right hand. You'll take the right fingertips, place them on the mat next to you. And you're gonna take your left hand over your um, head and you're gonna just graze your, um, the top of your ear with your fingertips. And you're just gonna gently tip your head over to the left shoulder. And then start to make those tiny little movements back and forth with the head. So we're opening up the right side of our neck here. Continuing to breathe gently and deeply. And then you can release the top of the head. And then go ahead and grab your strap or a towel if you have it. And you're just going to um, grab either end of the strap. We're going to um, do some shoulder rolls. But you're going to um, create a lot of space at first um, with the strap or the towel. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to um, bring the strap behind us as such, and then move it over our head and, for and forward. So at first you want a really a lot of room on the strap, you want um, some generous space here. And then we'll slowly, um, as we move through this, we'll, we'll tighten the grip on the, um, and uh, tighten the grip on the strap. So we'll start in front. As you inhale, you're gonna bring the strap over your head. And then as you exhale, you'll bring it back behind you. And then inhale up and overhead, exhale down in front. So you can kind of tighten that slack a little bit on your next go around. So inhale up and overhead, and then exhale behind you. Inhale up and exhale forward. Inhale up and overhead, and then exhale behind. Try to keep the arms as straight as you can as you move through this. And one more time, inhale up, and then exhale behind. Inhale up, and exhale in front. And then go ahead and release that strap. You're gonna take your right hand up and overhead Left arm comes behind you, fingertips are at the ground, right behind your low back. And you're gonna twist your whole body over to the left, place the right hand over the left thigh. And we're coming into this nice seated twist here. So we wanna to try to open up and broaden the collarbones towards the side of the room as we twist. If your neck allows it, you can move your gaze over your left shoulder. Otherwise you can keep your, um, your gaze just to the side. As you inhale, think about extending the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. So we have this nice long line of energy moving from the sit bones all the way up our spine to the, to the ceiling out the crown of our head. So each time you inhale, see if you can sit up a little bit taller. And then each time you exhale, maybe you twist a little bit deeper. And then you can use that right hand on your thigh to open up the uh, shoulders and the collarbones even more to the side of the room. Take one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you'll very slowly start to uncurl and unwind back to center. Take a deep breath in to reset. And a deep breath out. As you inhale, you'll reach your left arm up to the ceiling. And then your right arm comes behind you, fingertips are right behind your low back. And you're gonna to start to already twist open to the right, and then you'll take that left hand onto the outside of your right thigh. And then use that momentum that you have to broaden at the collarbones and open up the shoulders towards the side of the room. And then you can keep your gaze just as is, or you can take it over your right shoulder. It's totally up to you, it's your practice whatever feels comfortable for you. And again, we wanna take a deep breath and lengthen in the spine, sitting up as tall as possible. And then with each exhale, maybe we twist just a millimeter deeper. 
One last breath in. And then as you exhale, you'll slowly start to uncurl back to center. Take one more cleansing breath in through the nose. And a deep breath out. From here, we'll just move off of the pillows that you're sitting on or the blocks and we'll come onto tabletop. So hands and knees, we'll just move those props out of the way. And in tabletop pose, we wanna make 90 degree angles here. So we want our hips to be stacked directly over our knees and our shoulder is right over our wrists. We spread our fingertips as wide as they go and root down into the thumbs and the pointer fingers of our hands. And then you press the tops of your feet into the mat. As you inhale, you're gonna to start to drop your belly down towards the mat and lift your tailbone up towards the ceiling. You're gonna pull your chest through your shoulders towards the front of the room and take your chin up towards the ceiling. So we want a broad collarbone, broad chest. So this is cow pose. And then as we exhale, we're gonna go the opposite direction. So we're gonna tuck our tailbone underneath us, pull our belly into our spine, press into the palms to puff up the upper back and then take our chin into our chest. This is cat pose. And then as we inhale, we'll, we go the opposite direction. So we drop our belly low, lift the tailbone, lift the chin, lift the chest. And then exhale, we round and curl inwards. A few more times through this. So we inhale into cow, tailbone lifts up, chin, chin lifts up. And then exhale, round and curl, puff up the upper back. One more time, inhale into cow. And then exhale into cat. On your next inhale breath, come back to a neutral spine, so a flat back. You're gonna take the toes to touch together Take the knees a little bit wider, and if you, need, if, you, if you have some knee problems, I would grab a pillow just to have it nearby. You're gonna sit back into your heels and start to walk your hands out farther towards the front of your mat and sit down into child's pose. So if this hurts your knees, this is where you can take a pillow and place it in the creases of your knees and then sit back into the pillow. So some modifications there if you need it. The other modification, if you can't reach your forehead or your chest down to the mat, you take a pillow and place it uh, in between your knees and you rest your chest and your forehead down. So a couple modifications there, but you really wanna reach those fingertips forward and sink your hips back towards your heels. And this can be a passive child's pose here. So you can rest your forearms onto the mat, your elbows. And then from here, you're just going to roll your forehead back and forth across the mat. So this tends to feel pretty good when you're stressed out. Maybe you have a headache. This is a nice way to relieve that stress. And if you have lost that connection with the breath, this is a really good time to refocus and bring all of your awareness to your breath. Take one more deep breath in. As you inhale, feel the back body expand and open. That back rib cage, all of those little tiny intercostal muscles, feel those expand as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you kind of feel your chest and your ribs sort of melt even further into the mat. And then with your next inhale breath, we'll come back to tabletop pose. You're gonna tuck your toes underneath you and you're gonna walk your hands out a little bit farther. So rather than having the shoulders under, uh, over top the wrist, they're gonna be a little bit farther forward. So wrists are forward, you're tucking the toes under, you're gonna to start to lift the knees up and send your hips back in space, try to straighten out your legs any amount and then sink your heels towards the mat, sink your chest down towards the mat so the heels do not, this is downward dog, so the heels do not have to touch here. That, that's a really critical thing. But we want to energetically push them down, right? So they do not have to touch. The other thing is we wanna look down at our hands and make sure that our fingertips are spreading as wide as possible and really press into the palms to lift up out of the shoulders, 
So your ears are in line with your biceps. You want to try to spin your triceps down towards the mat and rotate your biceps up towards the ceiling. Pull the belly in super tight towards the spine. And then similar to cat pose, think about puffing up that upper back and sending the tailbone down towards your heels. So we kind of want cat pose in the back. And just take some deep breaths here in downward dog. For many of us, this is like a really difficult pose. It's really tight in the hamstrings and the quads, or I'm sorry, in the calves. So you can pedal out the feet to just kind of warm up the calves a little bit. Some people call this walking the dog. So take one more deep breath in, find a little bit of stillness here. And then as you exhale, you're going to shift forward into plank pose. So high plank, and, high, and you might need to adjust a little bit, lengthen your stance. So our feet, our hips width distance apart, our hands are shoulder width distance apart. We're pressing down into our palms. If this is um, difficult for you on the wrists, you can bring it down into a forearm plank here. Otherwise, high plank, spreading the fingertips wide, pulling the belly tight into the spine, taking the tailbone down towards our heels, and we're even pulling our chest forward and broadening at the collarbones. A slight tuck to the chin and we're holding here for five breaths. Strong core, strong legs. You can squeeze the glutes together, lift the kneecaps up so the quads are engaged. Send the heels back in space. Really root down into those finger, uh, the, the knuckle mounds of your fingers here. One more breath in. And then as you exhale, you're going to shift your shoulders forward, come up onto the tippy toes of your feet, of your toes. You're going to start to bend the elbows, keep the elbows as close to your side ribs as possible. And you're going to lower all the way down to your belly. Go ahead and untuck your toes. From here, you're going to pull the shoulder blades together. You're going to um, place the palms. The palms will be still right next to your rib cage. And you're going to start to engage your low body here. So I want you to think about lifting up, um, um, spinning the inner thighs up towards the ceiling and rolling the pinky toe side edge of your feet down towards the mat. Then you're going to squeeze your glutes together and then you're going to pull your tailbone down towards your heels and press your pubic bone into the mat. So take a deep breath in through your nose and then exhale everything out that you've got. And then on your inhale breath, you're going to use the strength of your back to lift your shoulders and your chest off of the mat for baby cobra pose. So in baby cobra, we're very light in the palms here. So all of the work is coming from our back. And continue, you want to continue to pull um, the tailbone down, squeeze the glutes together, spin the thighs, inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Take one more breath in. And then exhale, release, forehead comes down, all the way down to the mat. From here, we're going to press back up into tabletop position. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, walk out the hands a little bit farther. Tuck your toes, start to lift your hips, press back into downward facing dog. Take an inhale breath in downward dog. And then as you exhale, you're going to walk your feet forward to the front of your mat to meet your hands. Take your feet wide, so as wide as your hip bones. And then make sure that your second toes are pointing straight forward. You can bend super generously into the knees and then just fold forward, grab opposite elbows. Allow your upper, whole upper body to just hang really, really heavy here. You can even sway side to side whatever feels good here, but we want a nice deep bend in those knees. Just a first. If you're super flexible, you can kind of work on straightening the legs, but otherwise let's just keep a nice bend and let this be just a really nice inversion. A couple deep breaths here. Maybe switch the grasp of the elbows if you have opposite elbows. 
and see if you can shift the weight more into your toes. So you want your hips to kind of be more over your heels. Let's take a couple more deep breaths. And then go ahead and release the elbows if you have them. You're gonna bend even more into the knees and you're gonna very slowly start to uncurl yourself all the way back up to standing. Allow the shoulders and the arms to just hang as you uncurl all the way up. Squeeze the glutes together as you get to the top. Take your shoulders into your ears and then roll the shoulders down. Open up the hands to the front of the mat, the front of the room. And then in here, this is mountain pose, so I want you to think about um, a really strong roots coming from your feet. So you want all four corners of your feet to be feeling the mat. And then I want you to think about pulling your low belly in super tight, taking your tailbone down towards your heels, cinching your ribs together, and then creating a little space between your shoulders and the ears. So pulling the shoulders down and slightly back. And we'll take a deep breath in. We'll reach our arms all the way up to the ceiling. As you exhale, you can swan dive or bow forward, back into forward fold. So we have a, a, bend, a deep bend in our knees to start. As you inhale, you're gonna lift up just halfway. So the fingertips are gonna come to the shins and you're gonna come halfway so that your spine is super straight and long. And like somebody sort of has a, a string attached to the sternum, you're gonna reach the sternum forward, or I'm not, sorry, not your sternum, the crown of your head forward, like you're this um, one long line of energy coming from your hips out the crown of your head towards the front of your mat. Take one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna fold forward again, plant your hands onto the mat, step your right foot back, step your left foot back, and then two options here. You can either lower all the way down to cobra like we did before, or you can shift your shoulders past your fingertips, come up onto your, finger uh, onto your toes, and then you can just lower halfway. So you wanna keep your elbows pinned to your sides and you do not want your shoulders to dip below your elbows. So you want your elbows and your shoulders to be in line or shoulders above the elbows. Untuck the toes, and then you're gonna press your chest forward and through for upward facing dog. So that's the second option. You can either move into that cobra all the way down to your belly or to upward facing dog through chaturanga. From here, using the strength of your core, you're gonna pull your belly up, lift your hips high up towards the ceiling, flip the toes over and come back to downward facing dog. Inhale, breath through the nose. Exhale, walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, come up halfway, so that halfway lift, that L shape with our body. So fingertips, if you're super flexible, fingertips can stay up onto the mat. Otherwise, take them to your shins or your thighs, not on top of your knees. And then exhale, we fold again, bend into the knees, weight is in the toes. And then as we exhale, we're reverse swan diving, diving excuse me, or reverse forward folding all the way up to standing. Arms reach up overhead, maybe the palms touch, Maybe the gaze is up towards the ceiling. And then as we exhale, our hands come through prayer in front of our heart for mountain pose. And we'll do that two more times. So inhale, reach up, up and overhead. And then exhale, bow forward for forward fold, bend into the knees, weight to the toes. Inhale, come into that halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. Plant the hands onto the mat, step your left foot back, step your right foot back for high plank, either lowering all the way down or lowering halfway into chaturanga push-up, inhaling into upward facing dog or cobra, and exhale into downward facing dog. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling out the nose. One more time, inhale through the nose. Exhale, walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, come into that halfway lift. Long, flat back here. And then exhale, bend your knees, fold forward. Inhale to rise all the way up to standing, root down into the feet, press into the feet, 
So reach your arms up towards the ceiling, palms maybe come to touch, and then exhale, hands come through center in front of your heart. One more time through that, inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, exhale, bow forward all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, plant your hands onto the mat, step back to high plank pose, right leg first, then left, either lowering halfway or all the way down, inhaling into your back bend of choice, and then exhale into downward facing dog. From here, you're going to lift your right leg up towards the ceiling, come up onto the tippy toes of the left foot. Keep your right foot flexed. See if you can really reach that heel back towards the, or back up towards the ceiling. And then lower the left heel. You're gonna draw your knee into your chest, shift forward into one of these little mountain climbers. And then using the strength of your core, you're gonna to try to pick up your knee and your foot a little bit more and place it in between your hands. So we're in a low lunge position to start. You're gonna drop that left knee down, untuck the back toe, and then come up onto, um, or come upright. From here, you're just gonna place your hands on top of your right thigh. In this low lunge, a lot of, uh, a lot of people tend to sink down into the hips. And this is good, but at first, when we first sort of get into this, we wanna to try to make a 90 degree angle with our legs. So notice how my knee is right over my ankle and my hip is right in line with my knee, same thing here. So you want a 90 degree angle first, and then you wanna think about pulling your tailbone down towards your knee, that left knee, and pulling your front hip bones up towards your shoulders. So it's almost like this thrusting motion. So right now my pelvis is tilted. I wanna pull my pelvis forward. So this is tilted back when we can sink into this, right? So this, we don't want our knee above our, or we don't want our knee past our ankle, but we want it right above. And we want a, a neutral pelvis here. So we wanna tuck that tailbone underneath us, pull our low belly in, pull the hip bones up. So you should already feel this in that, um, that left hip flexor and that left quad here. Take a deep breath in through your nose, sit up nice and tall, and then a deep breath out. From here, um, if you have blocks, this is a good time to use them. You're gonna place the blocks right underneath your hands and you're just kind of um, gonna fold forward over that right leg. From here, you can slide that right knee back ever so slightly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep that left palm either on the block or onto the mat. And then you're gonna start to rotate your um, shoulders and your chest open towards your right knee. And then from here, you can grab a strap or if your quads are super tight, you can try to hook that back foot with the strap. With the right arm, you're gonna grab onto that strap and pull um, the left knee, or sorry, the left foot towards your glute. So we're coming into this sort of um, twisting position and you can take the right foot and just walk it a little bit out towards the edge of your mat and then maybe even drop that right knee out a little bit so that it's kind of open up, you can kind of see there. Uh, so you can either use a strap or if you're feeling pretty flexible and open, you can just grab the left foot with your right hand and then keep twisting open. So this is a nice like quad stretch here in addition to a, a twist. Take one more deep breath in. And in this position, I want you to think about shifting forward onto the top of your quad instead of onto your kneecap, right? So instead of being right on your knee, you kind of want to pull forward so that you're more on your, on your quad. Take one more deep breath in, and then go ahead and release that um, foot. And then you're gonna come back on top of that left knee. You're gonna straighten out the right leg. So here's where blocks also come in handy. We're straightening out this right leg, flexing the foot. We're coming into half splits here. So rather than sort of crunching over like this, the blocks help us keep our spine nice and long and straight. So flex that left foot and really try to peel your toes back towards your shins. You should feel a nice stretch in the calves when you do that. And then you can kind of gently, leading with the chest and the chin, lean forward over that extended leg just for a, a nice little micro fold here. One more deep breath in. You're gonna to try to energetically drag that right heel back towards your hips. So we want a nice neutral hip here. So. Hips are right in line with one another. 
flat pelvis. Take one more deep breath in and exhale out. We're gonna re-bend into that right foot. So we're back in our low lunge position. Have your blocks or a pillow nearby. You're gonna place the palms on either side of your foot and you're gonna to start to toe heel walk the right foot behind your left hand. Okay, so we're coming all the way over here towards the outer side of our mat, or the outer edge of our mat. So much so that the outer edge of your right leg, or sorry, your right foot is coming down. And then you're gonna drop your knee down. So our foot, our leg is at an angle here. Our knee is kind of right next to our right wrist. And then with this back foot, this back leg, you're just gonna slide it backwards. And there you are, you're in pigeon pose. So if you're feeling super tight, I highly recommend grabbing a block and placing it underneath that right hip or pillow. So either one. And we're upright to start. So coming into um, onto our fingertips and pulling our chest forward and spreading our collarbones wide. And I want you to think about um, having equal or our hips sort of in this squared like position towards the front of the room. And then I want your uh, back left heel to be pointing straight up towards the ceiling as well. So again, if you need, if you are, are pretty tight in the hips, a pillow underneath that right glute is very, very helpful here. And then from here, we can slowly walk our fingertips forward. If you would like, you can either place your forearms on blocks as such, or you can come all the way down to the floor. It's totally up to you. And then think about pulling that left hip forward and the right hip back as well. So we want our hips to be squared off to the front of the room. Take one more deep breath here and deep breath out. Big breath in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna come back upright onto your fingertips. Remove any props that you have out of the way. Hands come flat onto the mat. You're gonna tuck the left toes under, lift that knee up, and then you're gonna pull the right knee into your chest so and back into um, mountain climber pose. And then you're gonna just step your left foot back for downward dog. And if you'd like, you can kind of reach that leg up and just shake it out a little bit. Maybe make some circles with the knee. And then step your right foot back to meet the left. As we inhale, we're gonna lift our left leg up towards the ceiling, keep that foot flexed. We're gonna come up onto the, um, the tiptoes of our right foot, really lift that um, left heel up towards the ceiling. Keep the hips as square to the mat as possible. And then as you exhale, you're gonna drop that right heel down. You're gonna take your knee into your chest. So shifting forward so that your shoulders are right over your wrist. Pull your knee as tight into the chest as you can. And then with the strength of your core, you place that left foot in between your hands here. You can drop that right heel or the right knee down, untuck the back toes and rise into that low lunge position. And then again, we want 90 degree angles with our leg. We wanna pull our front hip bones up towards the ceiling, tailbone comes down. Nice, long, straight spine here. So we really want to sit up nice and tall. Take a deep breath in, feel that opening in the right quad, the right hip flexor. And then we're gonna frame our front foot with our hands. Place the right um, hand on the inside edge of your left foot, either on the mat or on a block. And you're gonna start to toe heel walk the left foot to the outer edge of the mat. Start to slide that right knee back a little bit farther. Twist open, twist your shoulders open towards that left knee. And you're gonna to start to bend that right knee. If you can grab the foot or use a strap, go for that. And feel that stretch in the quad, feel the twist in the spine. And just take some deep breaths here. And you're slowly gonna release that right foot, turn to face the front of the mat again, and then you're gonna re-bend into that right knee. So um, you're coming right on top of that right knee, and then you can grab the blocks if you need them. You're gonna straighten out that left leg. So we're coming into half splits. So you'll notice that you can very easily sort of pull your leg forward so that your left hip is forward past your right hip. So think about lining up your hips so that your pelvis is neutral, your hips are in sort of the same plane. 
And you're really gonna flex that left foot and pull the toes back towards your shin. So this is a really nice calf stretch. And then hands are um, on blocks right underneath the shoulders or onto the mat. You're just gonna gently lean forward, keeping the back straight here. So you don't wanna crunch and curl inward. We wanna just try to keep the back as straight as possible, which is why we have the box. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale, you're gonna re-bend into that left foot and then just shift a little bit forward. We're gonna set up for pigeon pose on the other side. So you're gonna to start to toe heel walk that left foot to the outer edge of the right side of your mat. So much so that you're on the outer edge of your left foot. And you're gonna drop your knee down right behind your uh, left wrist. And then slide that right leg back and you're in pigeon pose. And then we're, on, we're starting on our fingertips to start. So again, option here to slide a block right underneath your left glute if your hips are pretty tight. And we'll just stay upright to start. We want our, um, we definitely want our hips to be in the same line as one another. So our hips are squared to the front of the mat as much as possible. Keep flexing that left foot uh, to protect the left knee. And then from here, you can kind of walk it out to sleeping pigeon, for, uh, forearms come down to a block or on top of the mat. Keep that uh, right heel pointing straight up towards the ceiling. A couple more deep breaths here. And then you'll slowly start to walk upright again. So coming onto the hands, you're gonna tuck your right toes underneath you, lift the knee off of the mat, and then you're gonna pull, press into the uh, palms to pull the left knee up into your chest and then take it back to downward facing dog. You can kind of shake out that leg if you need, make some circles with the hips, anything that feels good here. And then we're gonna make our way down to a seated position. So you can come onto hands and knees and swing your legs out in front of you. So our legs are straight out in front of us. I recommend taking a pillow and placing it right underneath your sit bones. And that way, your pelvis is already leaning forward, setting up for a fold. So rather than sort of crunching in like this, we're already, uh, the pillow is allowing our pelvis to tilt forward so it's a little bit easier for us to fold forward. So from here, our legs are straight out in front of us. You're gonna bend the left knee, place the, right, uh, the left foot on the inside of your right thigh. You're gonna reach your arms up and overhead and turn your whole upper body and your shoulders to face that right extended leg. And you're gonna to start to reach forward and lean forward, um, allowing the chest and the chin to guide you and fold over that extended leg. You wanna keep, um, you really wanna keep turning the shoulders towards that leg too. And you should feel a nice stretch in the left side of your back here as you do this. So you can reach for the calf, the ankle, the foot, anywhere that you need here. Take another deep breath in and deep breath out. One more breath in. And then as you exhale, you'll walk your hands back up your leg, coming upright, straighten out the left leg, bend the right knee, place the right foot on the inside of your left thigh reach the arms up and overhead find a lot of length here before you start to reach forward and you're going to turn your whole body to face that left leg and then gently you're going to reach forward leading with your chest and your chin and fold over that extended leg keep your left foot flexed here so you get a little more calf stretch and you can grab the shin the ankle the calf the foot or to anywhere where you can reach here. You should feel this nice opening in the right side of your back. One more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you'll walk yourself up. Extend that right leg straight out in front of you. And then we're gonna come down to our back and we're gonna set up for supported bridge pose. So a couple options here with props. If you have the pillow or a block, we're gonna come down to our backs and you're gonna place your feet hips width distance apart on the mat. The second toes are pointing straight forward. And then you're gonna shift your, um, you're gonna sort of scoot your uh, hips and your tailbone closer to your heels here. 
And then um, using the pillow or using a block, whatever you have, you're gonna lift your hips up off of the mat and you're gonna slide that block right underneath your sacrum. So what I mean by that is that it's gonna be right in between your tailbone and your lumbar spine. So it's that bony part of the sacrum, sort of like at the top of your butt. So you don't want it to be on your tailbone and you do not want it to be on your lumbar spine. So we're in this nice supported bridge pose. This should feel like really, really good for you. From here, we're gonna extend the left leg straight and the heel is resting onto the mat. So you should feel a nice stretch in that left hip flexor when you do this. If you feel like you want more, you can draw your knee into your chest. And then what I want you to do here is practice, uh, just play around with pointing and flexing the left foot. So you should feel a slightly different sensation in that hip flexor as you point and flex the foot. This should feel like amazing for, for you guys. So I know it does for me. If you want a little bit more, you can take that right knee towards your left armpit and that should give you a little bit more stretch. And you really, really want to extend through either the toes or the heel of that left foot. So we want an engaged leg on this side. The more you sort of extend forward on that left leg, the deeper the stretch. And then slowly we'll start to come back to center, placing both feet flat onto the mat. And then you're gonna extend the right leg straight, heel comes down. And if this is enough for you, you can stay here. Or if you want a little bit more, you can draw the left knee into the chest. And then again, we wanna play around with the flexing of the right foot or the pointing of the right toes. So it's kind of what whatever you sort of feel like you get the most out of this, find that sort of space and that edge and stay there. And if you want a little bit more, you can take the left knee towards the left armpit really extend the right leg long and straight. Deep breaths here. And then we'll slowly start to come back to center. You can place the left foot down, bend the right <clears throat> knee again and place the right foot next to the left. So we're back in supported bridge. And then you're just going to press into the feet to lift your hips off of the block or the pillow. And then just slide it out of the way and very slowly vertebra at a time you're going to lower back down to the mat from here you'll just extend the left leg straight draw the right knee into the chest and then using the left hand place it on top of your right knee and you're going to guide that left knee across your body over towards the left and we're coming into a twist on our backs so the goal here is to try to keep our shoulders planted on the mat. You don't have to have your knee touching the ground here, but you want both shoulders onto the mat. And from here, think about drawing your right hip down towards the bottom of your mat, towards that left foot and away from your shoulder. So that should create a little bit more space in the spine. And then if your neck allows it, you can turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Let's take some deep breaths here. And then very slowly, we'll start to unwind back to center. And then just switch your legs. So you'll extend the right leg long, knee comes, left knee comes into the chest. And then using the right hand, you're gonna guide your left knee across your body over towards the right. And again, it doesn't have to touch the ground, but we do want our shoulders to be planted firmly onto the mat. And then see if you can draw that left hip down towards your right foot, towards the bottom of your mat and away from your shoulder. And then if your gaze, if your neck allows it, you can take your gaze towards your right fingertips. I'm sorry, your left fingertips. And just take some nice deep breaths here. And then we'll slowly start to come back to center. This time we're going to take both knees into the chest. You're going to wrap your arms really, really tightly around your shins and take your chin towards your knees. So you're curling up into this super tiny, tiny ball. We're just going to rock from side to side. And then go ahead and drop your, your head back down to the mat. Keep your, um, keep your knees drawn in. 
you're just going to extend your legs straight up in front of you or straight up towards the ceiling. From here, take your hands down by your sides and then press your shoulder blades into the mat. So we're sort of pulling our shoulder blades together and we're pressing them into the mat. And then pull your belly in super nice and tight and we're very, very slowly going to lower our legs all the way down. Try to keep your low back pressing into the mat. Eventually, the legs come down. And take your um, legs kind of wide here and allow the outer edges of your feet to flop down towards the mat inner, and then the inner arches up towards the ceiling. You're gonna flip your palms so that your hands are facing up. And then again, you wanna press, maybe try pressing into the head to pull your shoulder blades off of the mat, like lifting your chest up and then pulling them together and then releasing. And then the same thing, we wanna kinda of do the same thing with our low back. So lift your hips up off of the mat and then just kinda of tuck your tailbone underneath you so you're pressing more into the low back here. So that should be a nice little release for the low back. And then another option is to place a pillow, uh, two pillows underneath your thighs if this is pretty tough on your low back. And I actually recommend doing that. So I'm gonna grab my two blocks. I'm gonna place them right underneath my thighs. And then we're in our final resting pose, Shavasana. You can go ahead and close the eyes and let go of any breath control that you have. And just start to think about relaxing every part of the body. So starting with the toes and the ankles and the feet, if you're feeling any sort of tension there, try to release that tension. And then moving up into the knees and the quads and the hamstrings, just let go of anything that you're sort of holding on to there. And then into the hips and in the low belly, just let go of that breath. Allow your back to melt into the mat. Coming up into the chest and into the shoulder blades. Feel like gravity is really pushing you down, like you have a weighted blanket on top of you. And then allow the tension in the shoulders and in the neck to release. Unclench your jaw and remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Slightly part the lips. And then just allow those eyes to just be fluttered closed. And remove the crease from your, your forehead and your brow. So everything is just fully relaxed in your body here. Slowly start to deepen the breath. So taking some longer breaths here. And then inviting some really tiny movements into the fingers and the toes. Maybe the ankles and the wrists. And bending into the elbows and then just wrapping your arms around yourself like you're giving yourself a little hug here and then go ahead and bend the knees place the feet onto the mat and then unraveling your arms you're just going to roll off to one side in the fetal position so whatever side feels comfortable and then use your lower arm as a pillow and just take a moment here to recognize how your body feels right now versus how it felt in the beginning of class. Maybe the little tingling sensations or the warmth or the 
subtle energy that you feel sort of coursing through the body. Maybe the relaxation of the mind, the steadiness of your breath. And then using that, using your upper arm, your hand, you can press yourself slowly up to a seated position. Again, if you'd like to sit on a pillow or a block, we're gonna to come to just a cross-legged position once again. Sitting up nice and tall, maybe keeping the eyes closed here. And then hands come onto the knees. And we'll take a final few breaths here together just to close out the class. So we're inhaling through the nose. And a big breath out of your mouth. Just sigh it out, inhaling through the nose. And then biggest breath yet out the mouth. One more time, make this your biggest breath, inhaling through the nose. And exhaling out the mouth. You can gently blink open the eyes bringing awareness back to your mat and to your body and your mind. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for this 45 minute practice. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more relaxed and ready to tackle the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Dad decided not to get an icon pass this year. Instead, making home movies in the garage. Cut, cut, cut! But every movie he makes is about skiing. Why didn't you just get the icon pass? Why do you keep bringing that up? To be honest, I'm a little worried about him.